Today on Cat's Moses Woodworking, we're gonna make this maple and cherry moxin vise for about a hundred bucks. Today, we're gonna take it a step further. We're gonna build this moxin vise for under $50. And actually the hardware is only $27. The wood is what makes it closer to 50, but you could build this for under 30 bucks if you just use some scraps around your shop. Uh, moxin vices are one of the most useful vices when it comes to joinery and hand tools. Uh, and I built this one about a year ago for under $100 and it was the best thing I added to my shop. So I wanna see if I could take it a step further and make it even cheaper for you guys. We're gonna have digital as well as actual templates on my website. So go on over there and check them out. Uh, so let's get started with the build. Okay, so you're gonna wanna get started one of three ways. I have full size plans available, which are super cool. Uh, so you can print them out full size, uh, they're digital full size plans. So you can either look at them on your computer, print them out in an eight and a half by 11 and use the dimensions or print them out full size and make your own templates. The other thing I have is these templates available and uh, we cut these templates over on my new best cutter laser. So cool guys. One of the fringe benefits I didn't even know until I cut it out is the laser is so thin. You'll see there's a bunch of different steps with all these different holes that you need to do. And this cut all those steps out for you. So you can use, look, I even have little templates of all the steps. So they just fit in perfectly just like this. And you can use that for all the different steps, super cool. Or you can make your own dimensions and make this to the size that you want. The important step is gonna be the order of operations on the holes. Everything after that, just a vise. So the jaws can be any size you want. You can make it to fit your needs. So I'm gonna mill up some lumber to about just over like six and a quarter inches tall because we're gonna end up at six inches. So let's get started milling some lumber. Now here is the step that makes or breaks our project. We've got our stuff rough milled up and now we need to worry about alignment. Alignment is super critical. And so what we're gonna do is start by double sticking our pieces together and using one of the templates or a, you know, you can find this with a ruler if you didn't buy the templates. Again, only the holes matter, dimensions don't, um, but they're three inches in and three inches up. We're gonna drill an eighth inch hole through both pieces of wood and that's what's gonna we're gonna use for drilling all our other holes and all of our alignment. Um, so we drill that eight inch, eighth inch hole and after we separate them, uh, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna drill this big hole first. That goes down about an eighth of an inch. It's a one and five eighths inch drill bit. And then we're gonna use a three quarter inch drill bit to drill out three holes. We're gonna, we have three marks here. Uh, they're a quarter inch apart and that's what's gonna give us this oblong hole which in combined with this super cool washer I found on McMaster car that allows it to pivot three degrees, that's gonna also allow the jaw to pivot if you have odd shaped items. We're then gonna go drill a three quarter inch hole here in our rear jaw and then use the all thread to line up the nut, trace it like a butterfly key and chisel it out. So let's head over to the drill press. We're gonna drill our first hole, then uh, we'll do the other holes and then rough cut this out on a bandsaw and flush trim them up. Now we're gonna do some routing and I get to use my new router bit cabinet. If you haven't seen that video, it's linked right here. And we're gonna be using my favorite router bit of all time, the Mega Flush Trim Bit. There's a 15% off discounts code to BitsBits in the description that you can use to buy this if you didn't win it in the contest where we just gave it away. I've contacted the winner. Guys, thank you so much for entering that contest. I really appreciate it. This video was so fun. So go check that out if you haven't seen it. What's cool about this bit is it's got two bearings up and down. And so for a really big piece like this, we can take off the bottom bearing and work our way down. Now you saw me over on the bandsaw cutting real close to my template. And uh, it's honestly, the closer you get to your line, the better 
flush trimming goes for you. And it's probably a little cocky to do it with my templates on there, but of course I can make the templates really quickly, easily again. But if you order these templates, maybe make a second set or just draw with a pencil and then take it off and put it back on. So let's do some flush trimming. So now we have everything template routed. We have our holes drilled. Everything is dialed in. You are just about done here. Let's talk about the hardware. Now, this is the cheapest I could make this thing, which was about $2,700. We're gonna call it under 50 bucks all in. Now, I'm using these handles. All of this is from McMaster Car. I'll have everything linked below. Uh, you could get it different hardware from different places, but I highly recommend McMaster Car because it's really easy to get things that go together. The key to some of the really cool features in this is this $4 each washer. You don't have to do it. You could just get an inch and five eighths washer to stick in there, but then you lose your ability for the jaw to move this way and that way. So basically everything in here is a cheaper version of the Moxon Vice you've seen me build. The measurements are all the same. So if you wanna build this Moxon Vice, I have that video, it'll be linked right here. You can also get these plans and they will work for making this as well. But these washers, they have a taper to them. And so it allows your jaw to pivot up to three degrees, which is incredible. We're gonna use these handle. We've got this all thread here uh, and then four nuts. And we're gonna mortise one in uh, just like you would a butterfly key. We'll trace around it and chisel it out. And then the other one will go in the back and that'll lock the all thread in. And these will spin on the all thread, which will allow your jaw to go forwards and backwards. And then finally, after we get all our hardware in, uh, we'll probably put something on the face of the vise, like leather or cork or something to sort of soften it and keep it from marring your projects. And then we'll also put like a 90 degree leg back here so that your vise as you're sawing doesn't try and rack this way because it'll be easily clamped down right here. Um, but that little 90 degree piece, it honestly could be any piece of scrap. Uh, we'll just keep it from racking. So let's go ahead and get the hardware in here, get our 90 degree piece, and get some finish on this thing. I'm so excited, guys, you're almost there. So uh, keep on trucking. Okay, so we've got our leather on, uh, we've got everything done, we're ready to put her together. I think you saw me when I was cutting the nuts off, when I was cutting the all thread, stop it. Uh, when I was cutting the all thread, I had nuts threaded on there so that I could unthread them, which then reforms the threads. That's super important when you're cutting threaded material, whether it's bolts or whatever, you need to have a nut on there so that when it comes off, it's gonna make the threads correct again. Um, we're gonna put this together. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put a brace on the back. I kinda wanna see how stable it is first because this thing is just rock solid. So we're gonna give it a quick sanding, a coat of shellac, and then we're going to put it together. And you can put any finish on it. I just like shellac because it's not a spray and I wanna do it inside real quick. So let's get this thing put together and then we'll talk about how it works and the different functions of it.
All right, so here's the major use case for a moxin vise. This sits under your bench. It's basically a joinery vise. So you wanna run these edges right up to the edge of whatever you're clamping to. And you could drill holes in here and you know, screw it down if you wanted to. Uh, I was gonna add something to the back, sort of a brace, but once I clamp this on here, I, I don't really think it needs it. So just clamp it down to your thing. You wanna make sure the back jaw is even with the front of your table. And then you just take a piece of wood and just take these in here. Um, I think it's up to you. This is basically how wide your jaw could be. I did seven inches. I might cut these down a little bit because I don't ever really clamp anything bigger than two to four inches in my vise. And these uh, are up to you how much you care if they get in the way. But I mean, you know, I've got this thing cranked down and I can move. I could probably pick up my whole table here. I'm not going to because I'll throw out my old man back. Um, but then let's talk about how I would use this. So let's say you were using your Cat's Moses magnetic dovetail jig and you were cutting some dovetails, and you just, just like that. And that's not the vise being shaky, that's my whole table, because it's on wheels, but this thing is amazing. I mean, just simply incredible. This thing is in there, and then, you know, another way you would use it is if you were doing some edge jointing. Look how easy that is to clamp. And you grabbed your hand plane and just, You clean up edges on projects, chamfer them. I mean, that just, that works incredible. Can you believe we built this for under 50 bucks, guys? Um, remember to go check out, I've got the templates available in the store. I've got the digital plans, which will print out to full size from a PDF. This thing is absolutely incredible. And can you believe we did this for under 50 bucks? Uh, there's other types of hand wheels on McMaster car you can look around for that will be more expensive, but you know, they may be more your style, but this is the cheapest way to make a hardwood moxing vise and it works incredible. My other one, which you guys have seen, these are the same exact same size jaws. So if you want to build that one, um, it would be the same plans for the jaws and same sort of order of operations. Uh, that one you'll see in the video, I attached the handle to the all thread and used the all thread to go through, which gave me a wider clamping capacity because that one's more of a workbench. But either way, these things work just perfect. And it was, when I built mine, it was one of the most useful things I put in my shop. And the biggest benefit is the distance between the screws and the fact that you can put really wide boards in there for working on joinery and the fact that it, you know, we've use these washers it can clamp at a three and a half degree angle which is a massive amount and uh this was really cool so guys stay safe in the shop have a wonderful day please subscribe if you're new here and uh, we'll see you on the next one